A young boy survives a shipwreck and is trapped on a small lifeboat with a Bengal tiger. He survives thanks to his wit and cunning, but his life will never be the same again. It all starts when a young Canadian writer meets with Pai Patel. The writer sought and found Pai Patel after someone told him that this now middle-aged man has a terrific life story, which could be good for a book. Pai agrees to the interview and tells the writer the following story. Piscine Molitor, a very popular swimming pool in France, inspires a young father to name his son Piscine Molitor Patel. The kid grows up and starts attending school in Pondicherry. As he is about to enter secondary school, the unusual name causes the other classmates to make fun of him. So, instead of being called Piscine, he adopts the Greek letter Pi as his name. The bullying stops at school and the name catches on. From then on, everyone calls Piscine Pi Patel. Up to the age of 12, he was raised in a Hindu family that was polytheistic. At this age, he is introduced to both Christianity and Islam. Not knowing which religion to follow, Pai decides to believe in all three at once. Pai's mother supports his decision and thinks it's a good way to grow, but his father doesn't accept his son as someone who just wants to love God. Instead, his father wants to secularize him. The Patels are a relatively rich family. Pai's father is the owner of a zoo, and they have a lot of animals. One of the animals that Pai is really fascinated by is a Bengal tiger by the name of Richard Parker. Although he loves all the animals, he feels there's something special about Richard. One day, Pai makes a mistake and gets dangerously close to the tiger. Wanting to teach his son a lesson, Pai's father forces him to watch as Richard Parker kills a goat in front of him. As time goes on and Pai grows up to be 16, Indira Gandhi declares a state of emergency. During this turbulent and uncertain period from 1975 until 1977, the family struggles. The father finally decides that it would be best to take his family to Canada. Pai's father and family would travel to Canada along with all of their animals. There, the family would sell the animals and use the proceeds to start a new life there. The father figures out that he can book his journey on a Japanese freighter. The Patels and their animals board the ship. Nothing is unusual at first, but then a storm hits. While Pai is on deck, the ship flounders. It begins sinking. Panicked, Pai goes to find his family and possibly save them. Knowing that he would surely die, one of the members of the crew throws Pai on a lifeboat and survives the shipwreck. But he's not alone. While Pai watches the giant ship sink, he realizes that he is not alone on the lifeboat. There's a zebra that jumped on board, and there's also a Bornean orangutan on board. However, as Pai tries to help the zebra with her injured leg, a spotted hyena jumps out from under the tarpaulin of the boat and forces Pai to retreat to the edge of the lifeboat. Shortly after, the hyena kills the zebra while Pai watches in horror. The orangutan fights at first and can stun the hyena with a punch. Just as Pai is about to approach the monkey, the hyena jumps from below, grabs the orangutan by the neck, and kills it. Scared for his life, Pai retreats to the edge of the boat. Then, the Bengal tiger, Richard Parker, jumps from under the tarpaulin as well and kills the hyena. As Pai tries to escape certain death, Richard Parker retreats under the cover and doesn't get out for several days. This gives Pai enough time to make a small raft. He uses the paddles and the life vests to make it float and allow him to stay farther away from Richard Parker. Pai has been a vegetarian just like his mother. However, to survive, he needs to start fishing. This goes against everything he believes, but if he is to survive, it's a must. When the fish catches Pai, he feeds the tiger. One day, Richard Parker jumps into the sea to catch fish himself. However, because he can't swim, he is unable to make his way back to the boat. Instead of leaving him to drown, Pai saves Richard and brings him back on the boat. Later, a giant whale jumps from below the surface and crushes the life raft that Pai made for himself. All his supplies are gone, and he can no longer stay away from the Bengal tiger. Pai begins teaching Richard to accept him on the lifeboat. At that moment, Pai realizes that living with the tiger is what keeps him alive. One day, as they are floating aimlessly through the sea, they come across a floating island. The island seems strange, but it has a lot of edible fruit, fresh drinking water, and a lot of meerkats for some strange reason. Pai and Richard decide to live on the island for as long as they can, but that night, Pai realizes that the island turns very dangerous. The meerkats sleep in the trees. Richard returns to sleep in the lifeboat, 
and Pi grabs a fruit from the tree. Inside it, he doesn't find edible flesh, but instead a single human tooth. Realizing that the island is carnivorous, he leaves in a hurry along with Richard. After 227 days at sea with barely any food and water, he and Richard reach Mexico. Just as they get off the boat, Richard immediately leaves Pi. The teenager is heartbroken because he didn't even turn away. He just looked ahead and disappeared into the jungle. After authorities rescue him, Pai is questioned by insurance agents from the Japanese freighter company. Pai tells them the story about the animals, but they don't believe him. Instead, they ask Pai to tell them what really happened. Not wanting to argue with them, he tells the agents a more believable story. In this one, he swaps the animals with humans. The zebra becomes an amiable sailor, the orangutan his mother, the cook is the hyena, and Richard Parker is Pai. He tells them that the cook was a very gruesome man who killed a rat, dried it in the sun, and ate it. He was extremely resourceful and helped them survive. It was his idea to build a life raft from the paddles and the lifeboats so they could fish. The Buddhist sailor had a broken leg. He suffered terribly from the injury, but the cook told them that they would need to cut his leg. Pai and his mother held him down while the cook cut his leg. Sadly, after all of the agonizing suffering, he didn't make it. The cook did the same thing with his body as that of the rat. He ate him. Later, when Pai couldn't hold onto a sea turtle, the cook slapped him hard. Pai's mother defended him, and while Pai swam to the raft, the cook killed his mother and threw her body overboard to feed the sharks. The next day, Pai killed the cook and was all alone on the boat. Nonetheless, the agents are not satisfied with this story either. Instead of asking more questions, they just leave Pai and return to their jobs. Once he tells all of this to the writer, he begins to suspect that the animal story is just an allegory for the real story. He starts believing that the cook really partook in cannibalism on the boat, and because he attempted to eat his mother, Pai had to kill him. To survive, he had to eat his flesh. At the very end of the movie, Pai asks the writer if he can pose a question. The writer agrees, so Pai says, I've told you two stories about what happened to the ocean. Neither explains what causes the sinking of the ship and no one can prove which story is true and which is not. In both stories, the ship sinks, my family dies, and I survive. So, which story do you prefer? The author is set aback a little by the weird question, but he tells Pai that he likes the story with the tiger. Pai looks at him silently for a second and just says, thank you, and so it goes with God. Before the movie ends, there's a shot where the camera pans to the insurance report that the writer reads, the reports state Pai managed to survive on the lifeboat in the company of an adult Bengal tiger, confirming the validity of his insanely unbelievable story.